Hey, my name is McKenna Powell and I am an artist and I've been doing art pretty much my whole life. And I wanted to talk about something that happened to me probably, oh, it was 14, 15 years ago. I was, I was 17, 18 years old. I think, I think it was about 2007. So that's when I graduated high school. So I wanted to talk about a traumatic experience I went through regarding my art and not to belittle anybody's PTSD or say that mine is on the level of some other people's. I think everybody's situation is valid and I, I feel like at this point, I want to talk about my experience because for years I was just holding it inside of me and it was feelings of shame and guilt. I didn't know how to deal with it. And when it happened, I was a child. I was 18 and I don't think I was a very mature 18 year old. So I'll kind of explain what happened. So I... In high school, and junior high even, I started drawing and I was getting into doing manga, like anime style. So I got really into making comics and manga and I submitted a 25 page comic to the Rising Stars of Manga contest and I was a finalist. I didn't actually get into the finals where I my work was published, but I was like the top 24 where I was published online. So this comic was so dear to me and I spent years and years developing characters. And as an 18 year old, I felt so proud of where I had gone. And so right after I graduated high school, I, um, by word of mouth, I was just introduced to this nonprofit. They were an arts nonprofit organization and they did workshops with children and stuff. And so they wanted to bring me on as a teacher to teach comic making skills to kids, basically. To be honest, back then, I, I didn't really want to do it, but I kind of was just in a mode of like people told me what to do and I would just do it because I was an 18 year old child, you know? <laughs> I did everything, like interview, whatever, it was all said and done. So the day before I was to go and teach this workshop, it was the day before I get a phone call. This lady of the organization, granted this was 15 years ago, so I don't remember the phone call verbatim, I don't remember how I like word for word what I said, but what I do remember is I didn't handle the situation very well at all. I, I could have handled it better, but, but despite that, this is kind of what she said to me. They got a, a call from somebody um, because one of the pages of my comic was a poster for advertising for this workshop. So I get a call from this lady and she's saying somebody called them and said that they think that my work was a copy of somebody else's work. So on the phone call, they, they told me whose work it was. I don't remember. I don't remember who the other artist was. I don't think that they were published like nationally. I think they were more of a local published comic book maker. So, I mean, I didn't know who they were. I didn't know who this artist was. I didn't know their work. And I, and I told them, I told the lady, I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know who this artist is. And, and I remember I was breaking down and I started to cry. And I think I like started to get emotional and I screamed a little bit. So anyway, she had the attitude of it's like, well, uh, you are out. Like, you're not going to be teaching at this workshop. And I got really upset. And I think the worst thing that hurt me was she told me that 
she thinks that I need to find more of an original style or something along those lines. Like, my work wasn't original enough. So later on, after all that was said and, and I had just the worst night after that, in fact, I, I remember all the stress, um, the emotional stress and the physical stress, it brought on the first migraine I ever had. And I've been having migraines ever since. And that was the night I got my first migraine. Um, and it just shows how something that traumatic that happens to you, it, it brings on physical sensations. And, um, and frankly, like, I'm still dealing with, with that. And I think genetically I might be prone to migraines anyway, but that was the first time I got one. Anyway, so I I later found, you know, this this artist they were claiming I was copying and they were comparing a close-up shot of eyes. Like it was like a like shocked expression and you know, zooming in eyes and and it it wasn't even nearly the same thing. Like it was so far from being the same thing. It was so laughable. Anybody that I I talked to and compared the two were obviously on my side because it was just a ridiculous accusation. And even in film and comic making, it's like you zoom, zoom in on a, an object to emphasize it. It's like, how can you how can you accuse of somebody of not being original for using a, a device? But anyway, I I just wanted to express this out loud in some kind of tangible form because I always had this air of shame and and guilt that I did something wrong. I didn't like talking about it. I I wanted to just bottle it up and it just kind of became on the back burner of my mind. After that whole incident happened, I continued to go to school for art. I was starting my first year at college and I, I went to school for art and I pushed through it. But after that happened, I don't feel like I, I was the same. I mean, it affected me that much and my love for art was still strong enough that I continued onward. And I feel like everybody in whatever career or passion you have, you're always going to face something that, that tries to knock you down. And for me, you know, maybe that was one of the first things, well, no, it, it really wasn't the first thing to try to knock me down, but back then I was, I was super young. So it, it definitely affected me through the next few years of me making art. And plus all like the, all the college art classes and stuff, there's their own kind of challenges there. But yeah, if I were to take one thing from it now, honestly, it's just to have some sense of forgiveness for, for those people that were accusing me of something. I don't know if that lady on the phone read a comic in her life, you know, it, it didn't seem like it. It really didn't. And maybe the the people that were, they were just looking out for their buddy that made the comic and they didn't realize, you know, styling, there's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to be original and, um, the people that were probably accusing me of, of it weren't aware. And then there was also forgiveness for myself, for, you know, holding on to this and being afraid to share it and, and honestly, just, just letting it out. I, I remember somebody was talking to me about the same organization and they had an amazing experience with them and I didn't say anything. Uh, I was too afraid to, for whatever reason. Trauma is something that it's, it's an iffy subject. I'm not, a psychologist or anything, but if I were to give any words of wisdom, it would just be 
try not to hold on to that chain and there's a net flying around me. <laughs> um, try not to hold on to that shame and, and talk to somebody, whether it's a therapist or, or just don't let yourself be the only one dealing with it. Honestly, it's probably part of me now, you know, the experiences I went through, good and bad, it's, it's made me the person that I've become. I feel like I've finally reached an arc where I've come full circle and identified the things that happened that I wasn't aware of just because I was so young. Like, I... I had a stigma about comic making after that, for sure. Like, I was like, well, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to try and find something else. And I stopped. I mean, it, it, I think I tried a little bit after that, but like the passion was totally killed. I don't really know if I'll like ever get into comic making now, but man, I've been exploring old characters, character development and sort of this creation of worlds, a love that I once had. And it's great. It's, it's so very nice to return to a part of you that you were too shamed about before. And, um, yeah, I, I feel like just speaking these words, it releases something in me where I, I can keep moving on a little bit more, keep nurturing the child in me that fell in love with art in the first place. I, I would hope that for, for everybody that they could get to that point and they could, could experience healing in the things that they've gone through. But anyway, I think that's probably all I have to say about that. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. And yeah, I'll catch you later. <laughs> Cheers.